In this video, we're going to see how to share one view model across two fragments, and therefore also share the data from one view model across two fragments. A nice thing about view model and live data is that we get capabilities where we can have data that is observed by multiple parties. With the activity, we have essentially a container for our layout, and our, lay our layout in this case we're going to call a fragment. When we have one view model shared across multiple fragments, the activity has the option to remove one fragment and replace it with another, but still refer to the same live data. So to do this, we need to have the activity manage the view model, not the fragment. And then the fragment refers to the activity when it's obtaining the view model. And the activity should have some knowledge of which fragment is active at the moment. Let's take a look at this in code. First, a few things I created in previous videos. We have our activity. And then we have a main fragment that was initially created as part of this activity. And then we have an event fragment, which I added a little bit later. So if we take a look in the main fragment, we see that it is doing a bit of view model management right here. We see view model providers of so on and so forth. We're going to change that just a little bit. Let's copy this and let's go back to our main activity and let's put this in the on create function, just like so. Okay, bring a couple things in. Now, this actually works out okay for us right now because you see we're providing a reference to the current object to view model providers. And the current object in this case is an activity. And we said that the activity should manage the view model. Now I need to declare this. Let's go ahead and just say val view model, so on and so forth. Once we've done that, we can go back to our fragment. We can make a subtle change here. You notice that the view model provider here is once again referencing the current object. But in this case, the current object is the fragment that we're in, the main fragment. Instead of getting it from the main fragment, we need to get it from the activity, which is enclosing this fragment. So we can access the activity with a variable that we're inheriting called simply activity. And then we can use the Kotlin scope function let. Let simply says within this open close curly, we can refer to the activity here using the variable it. So let's take this view model, cut it like so. And instead of saying this, let's change that to it for activity. Now we do need to null assert it. So let's give it the double exclamation. This is in one fragment and the look and feel is going to be similar in our other fragment as well. So let's go to that other fragment and we see just to get things started, we actually created a different view model, but one we're not going to need. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that line and paste just like so. And now we know that both of our fragments are using this same construction that we have here to refer to the same view model, which in this case is called main view model. Now I do need to make one other change here because view model up above, I have declared as event view model. Uh, let's change that to main view model, uh, which is the common shared view model across both fragments. Now the short version is that's really all we need to do, but I'm going to go ahead and add a few more things so that we can actually see this work. Uh, but nonetheless, if you're curious how to share a view model between two fragments, that's really it. So what I'm going to do is you see I have this on left swipe. And on left swipe assumes that we're on the main fragment and we're going to the event fragment, which in other words, going from the master to the detail fragment. I'm going to paste under on swipe right, I'm going to paste something similar, but in this case, I want to go to the main fragment. So this will allow me to go back and forth between fragments. However, it would be a bit wasteful to create a new instance every time the user swipes left and every time the user swipes right. So I'm going to take this and refactor a little bit. I'm simply going to move to the top. And I know that's going to red line, so I'll come back and fix that in a moment. But we'll say private, late init, var, and then event fragment, just like so. And then private, late init, var, main fragment. Now down in the onCreate function, we can initialize these. And I'm simply going to paste in that logic that I saw down below. So you see, I'm taking that new instance to create the fragment, storing it into a variable here. Now I go back down to where I had that red line before and we say event fragment. Now on this next function, where we are switching back to the main or the master fragment, let's change that to master fragment, uh, sorry, main fragment. And then up above, just as we did before, we're going to say main fragment equals 
uh, main fragment dot new instance. The advantage here is the onCreate function is only invoked when this activity is created. So we're only going to be instantiating this fragment once each time it's created, not each time the user swipes back and forth. Now one other thought though, if we're already on the main fragment and the user swipes right, we don't need to show the main fragment one more time. So let's add one more variable here, something that's kind of like a control variable. Private, late init, var, active fragment. We'll simply declare this to the superclass of both fragments, which is the class called fragment. Now, down in the onCreate function, you see that we're starting with the main fragment initially. And once again, here's another new instance. We can get rid of this and we can simply replace it with a variable declined, declared on line 27, which is main fragment. Okay, let's do one other thing. After the commit now, let's say active fragment equals main fragment. So active fragment is whatever fragment the user currently sees. We can use that in an if test to make sure that we're not duplicating efforts. So in the on swipe right, we'll say if active fragment equal equal, let's say event fragment, then we're simply going to replace the current fragment with main fragment. So we're going from the detail view back to the master view. And then at the very bottom after commit now, we'll say active fragment equals main fragment. Okay, that allows us to make a change up above as well. On the on left swipe, we'll say if active fragment equal equal main fragment, then we'll go ahead and swap it to be the event fragment. And once again, after we swap it to be the event fragment, we say active fragment equals, so the assignment operator, event fragment. So you see, when we do the swap, we also change the active fragment indicator to tell us which one is active. Now let's take a look in the debugger and see what we have. You see, we start with the master fragment or the main fragment where we have a plant specimen that we're defining here. And then I swipe from right to left. And you notice the event fragment comes up where an event can correspond to a specimen of a plant. And we can have multiple events that correspond to a specimen of a plant. Water the plant, fertilize the plant, prune the plant, pick fruit off the plant, so on and so forth. Now, if I swipe from left to right, notice that we go back to the master fragment. Now, this, this is allowing us to swipe back and forth, but let's take a look now at how we can share data between them by using the view model. So, first of all, I go back to my project, and I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping here. I had made this event view model in a previous video, but I no longer need this because I've removed all references to it. So go ahead and delete that. And now let's go to our main view model and just make a couple of changes here. First of all, you see I have some private member variables or attributes here. Let's make one that represents the specimen that the user is working with at this point in time. So private var specimen. And then we'll say just specimen. Actually, you know what? Instead of declaring a type or anything, let's just assign it to a new specimen object. That'll look a little bit cleaner, just like so. Also, because this is private, let's go ahead and give it the underscore to indicate that it's private. Let's go to the bottom and let's make an internal getter and setter for it. So internal var specimen of type specimen. And then we'll say get return underscore specimen. And then set value, and we'll say curly, and then underscore specimen equals value. So simple getter and setter uh, to expose this publicly using proper encapsulation and doing it the Kotlin way by declaring an internal variable that essentially is a wrapper around a private variable. Okay. One more change that we can make, let's go back to our main fragment. And right now we have a kind of long-winded save specimen function. This is doing a few things. First of all, it is ensuring that we have a logged in and authenticated user, and then it's clearing out the specimen, and then it's actually saving the specimen to Firebase. Another thing that it's doing is it is populating a specimen object. Let's refactor this a little bit. 
First of all, we're declaring a local variable here called specimen, and we're creating a new specimen object and assigning it to that local variable. Let's promote this to be an attribute of the class, which means it will have visibility in multiple functions within this class. So to do that, we simply declare it up at the top outside of a function. We'll give it private access just like so. Now back down in that apply block, we will refer to this newly created attribute called specimen. And if you take a look at what's happening in the apply block, we're pulling values that the user has entered in the user interface. And we're using those values to set the values of variables, or in other words, attributes, of the specimen object here. Now let's take this and let's put this into a new function because if we take a look at the save specimen function, it's really doing several things. It's ensuring the user is logged on and then it is populating this object based on what the user entered in the user interface and then it's saving the data to Firebase. So really several things where a function should only do one thing and should do one thing well. So let's pull out this populate the object logic and let's put that into a brand new function. We'll say internal fun store specimen. We're using internal instead of private because internal means that this function can be called by other classes in the same module, where private means the function can only be called by other functions within the same class itself. It can't be called from other classes. We'll go ahead and paste this in. Now, one other thing that we can do is that we have our populated specimen now. And the next thing that we can do is we can assign that specimen over to our view model. So we can say view model dot specimen equals specimen, just like so. A couple ways we could do it. We can do it here, it'll work. We could also have done it in here and referred to the variable as this. Either way is going to work for us. I'll go ahead and leave it like so. Now, one other thing, let's go back up to our save specimen function. And we know we've taken out this part where we grab the data from the UI, we put it into the object. So we can go ahead and call that here, store specimen, just like so, to ensure that that behavior still happens. And after we do store to Firebase Cloud Fire Store, we then reinstantiate a new object and assign it to the specimen's attribute so that the next time around we're going to be, cre be creating a brand new object. In other words, between the save specimen function and the newly created store specimen function, we're getting the same behavior that we had before I did this refactoring, but we split it into two different functions so that the behavior of populating this object can be called from an external class, which we'll do in just a moment. It's always a good idea to document functions, especially ones that are not private. So I pause the video for just a moment and I put some Javadoc over here. Persist our specimen to long-term storage. In other words, Firebase Cloud Firestore. We're down here, we have populate a specimen object based on the details entered into the user interface. That should help a user understand what's going on in these functions. Of course, debugging is the ultimate way to understand it. I wanna go back to our main activity and before we swap from the main fragment to the event fragment, I want to make sure we've taken the details of the specimen that we're currently editing, and we've updated the view model with that. So take a look at this. Remember I'm in the activity, but note what I can do. I can say main fragment dot store specimen. Because I declared that as an internal function, it's visible to our activity, so our activity can kick this entire thing off. Let's go ahead and put a breakpoint there. And just for fun, let's go ahead and put a breakpoint here as well. We'll return to our event fragment. And I already have a save event function wired up to our save button. So what we're doing here, just like we did before in that store specimen function, is we're creating an event object and we're populating that event object. Now we can go one step further. We can say view model dot specimen. Remember that single specimen. And then we can talk to this events collection that we've added to the specimen, and we can simply say add, and we can add this populated event, just like so. Now, the best way to see this at this point is to walk through the debugger and watch this happen one line at a time. So the application is started up. We'll use our autocomplete, and I'll just simply type, ah, sure, feather reed grass. We'll say a, a beautiful ornamental grass and now I'm not going to hit save just yet. Instead, I'm going to swipe. 
So we see when we swipe, it, the breakpoint hits on main specimen, and now it's going to swap out that main fragment or the master fragment for the event fragment or the detail fragment. We take a look, and now we're at the event details page. So we're going to say water, quantity one, units gallons, event date, 03222020, description, I watered my plant. Let's watch what happens when we choose save. We get to the save event function, which we've seen before in a previous video, but let's go ahead and walk through it, F8. So we create an event object, and now we're going to start populating that event object with the data that we're gathering from our user interface. But the important part is when we get to this bottom part where we're looking at our view model and we're looking at the existing specimen and take a look at this. The specimen that we're referring to in the event fragment looks familiar. Feather reed grass, a beautiful ornamental grass. And I click to expand and we'll see that events currently has a size of zero because I have not executed that line yet. So go ahead and execute the line, and let's take a look one more time at our view model. And once again at our individual specimen, and now we see that we do have an event, and we see a little bit of stuff going on here, event type equals water. So we choose F9, and we'll go back to our screen again. Now I probably should clear out these fields, but let's just go ahead and say fertilize, and we'll say maybe a 0 0.5, and then we'll say cup. Okay, change the date just slightly. We'll say March 23rd, and we'll say fertilized with high nitrogen fertilizer. Something like that. And then once again, save. Now watch, hap watch what happens this time. We create another new event object. We walk through some things that we've seen before. And now we get to our view model. I'll go ahead and walk over that line. Let's expand and see some details here we see that we have our specimen and now we see we have two events we have event type water and event type fertilize in f9 and we're all set now one really nice thing about putting our touch events up in the activity is they're universal a right swipe and a left swipe and a down and an up swipe is all handled by the activity so notice when i swipe like so it's going to go back to the activity and it's going to say, okay, if I'm currently in the event fragment, take me back to the main fragment and make that the active fragment. Choose F9 and let's see what we have on our screen. Well, we're back to feather reed grass now. Now I could do something like choose save and let me snap a breakpoint up on our save specimen function in our main fragment. And really, I just want to take a look at what's in the memory here. So hit and save will allow us to hit a breakpoint. So I hit save. It's going to take us around to some login stuff. Not going to worry too much about that. What I really want to do is I want to show you that even though we're back into our main fragment, if I expand here, we'll see we have the specimen that we started with, feather reed grass. And if we look at events, guess what? We have the two events that were created in our other fragment. So I'll play this through because it's going to uh, prompt me to log in and other things like that. And indeed, after I played it through, you can see here on Firebase that it has stored information about our plant, like beautiful ornamental grass, the latitude, longitude, plant ID, plant name, feather reed grass, and then a specimen ID generated by Firestore. You notice also that it has our events here in a collection. Now, eventually what we'll do is we'll actually make it a separate Firestore collection out here. Uh, but nonetheless, you see that it is able to store each of these events with our specimen. We have one activity and it can manage one fragment, swap it out for another fragment. And because they're using the same view model with the same life data, the data is the same as we switch fragments back and forth. And it makes this mechanism of having a master detail flow very simple.